Okay, today I want to do a video about some comments I had, um, some viewer questions, some things I talked about with some people at the track. One was a guy is bottoming out his car going in. He wants to know exactly how to cure it. And I had a little bit of a different view on that, I think, than most people. Another one was the car was always too tight, not getting on the right front, and he wanted some advice on what to do there. So I'm going to answer that. And the third thing is, is the amount of weight on the rear tires and when people compare cars according to percentages. There's two different things I think about that and it's not what the convention is. So I'll go into that a little bit. And then the last thing I had a viewer comment that he wanted to make his own ride height um, figuring tool instead of buying one from All Star, which I did a video about. So I'll do some drawings and kind of show exactly how I go about making my own. So let's roll the intro and uh, let's talk about some race car stuff. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is what I call roll couple and dive couple. I think I think I'm pretty close on the terminology, but it's the percentage of spring in the front versus the rear and the percentage of spring from left side to right side. I had a viewer ask me about his car bottoming out real bad going in the corner and I said, well, in the spring of the year, kind of when the, tri when the uh, frost comes out of the track, it usually gets kind of rough and kind of really wet. And that can happen a lot of times in the spring, even if you had a perfectly balanced car in the fall and you really didn't change much. You'll find differences um, from a wet track in the spring to the wet track in the fall. So he's got a problem with the car bottoming out real bad and he wanted to know if he should just stiffen the right front and he said he was running a 550, this was a modified I believe, he was running a 550 on the left front and a 500 on the right and that seems pretty close to what people have going on now. But if he stiffens the right front spring, then both springs will be even. And what I told him is it's always better to keep what I call the, the roll couple the same. If you stiffen the right front, I would stiffen the left front about the same amount to keep the car off the ground. First of all, a lot of times when a car bottoms out, the left front is traveling as much as the right, although since we want to run our car up on the right front, it'll feel like just the right front is bottoming out, and it probably is, but it's probably the overall spring rate in the front. Well, I would increase both springs the same, front and rear, or front both sides, if you have a problem with your car bottoming out. It'll keep that percentage and it should keep that that uh, wedge and everything kind of closer to an original balance that you had on the car. Um, you're just stiffening the front end to keep the thing from digging in. Now, if you're, you know, if the car isn't at the right attitude, you want to adjust wedge a little bit here or there, then you can, you can add a, you know, you can differentiate your springs a little different or put them the same but if your car is running a good balance and it's just all of a sudden in the spring this thing starts bottoming out on you try um, stiffening both the left front and the right front on uh, on your car the second thing I had was I had a guy I, I've known for years back in the 90s we knew each other and he 
he kind of went, he was with the sprint car type of thing, and he, now he's getting into the, the uh, his son's running a IMCA style B mod, and he's having a problem with getting his car to turn. And I said, the biggest thing with getting these cars to turn is getting them up on the right front. His car is kind of laying on the right rear a lot. So I told him to keep softening the right front until you get closer to bottoming out, especially if the thing's laying on there. And there might be some other problems in that. I was asking him where the car is with this and what the car is with that. But basically, if your car's laying on the right rear and you're too tight and the thing ain't turning, the biggest thing you can do is get that car attitude up on the right front left rear up and get that thing with that kind of wants to turn going in the corner you, you know if you're picking up a push going in that's going to screw up your entire corner it doesn't matter if you need traction or whatever you have to get your entry right first and get that thing turning nice going into the corner so i told him probably soften the right front a little bit or even Make that split up there a little bit more so that thing wants to get up on that right front and turn a little bit. As we're talking about the roll couple thing and the, the dive couple thing with the spring rate percentages, you know, front to rear and side to side, I've noticed the biggest difference when I do a front to rear because we run a lot of paper clip type of tracks. But now as you get into your larger sweeping radius tracks, a roll couple is going to probably start taking more of effect. And that's the percentage of the right side springs and the left side springs. You know, you'll have a certain amount of spring rate on the left and a certain amount of spring rate on the right. And then you can soften or stiffen here and there. But the roll couples, what they call it, is the spring rates left to right, and the dive couple on spring rates would be front to rear. And it's something that you should at least kind of know about, and as you're trying to tune and analyze your car, just keep it in the back of your mind that there is an actual percentage people keep track of front to rear and side to side. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the difference between percentage of spring and weight percentage and the actual load on the tire. See, what gets you traction in the back is not that you're running 56% or 55%. What gets you traction in the back is the actual load on the tire and keeping that tire stretched into the track conformed and keeping it planted. So in our area, we run different weight rules according to different motor rules and spoiler heights. And we got to kind of just bring your race car attitude and we'll fit you in some place. And over the years, the rules have progressed to let different weight rules run with different motors and spoilers and everything else. So when you're talking to guys in the pits and the guy says you got to run 55%, you know, you have to take into the, the total equation of what is going on there. 55% at one weight class or one car could be 54 and a half, 54 at another. It, the real important thing in the rear is the total weight. I always used to figure my rear weight so when i weigh a car i'd actually write down the wheel weights and add them together and that's kind of what i wanted to see that rear axle weighing every time i set on the scales if the car was good and then you adjust up or down from there depending on what you need and you know wedge will go from side to side there's a lot of different factors there but i got to a point with our racing that everybody's telling me, oh, you got to run this. If you're struggling, people are always, you got to run what I'm running. Well, you're running a different weight class. 55 for you with a steel motor in the front is different than 55 to us in the rear. So when I got figuring at our car and every time we put it on the scales, 
I was not going for a percentage. I was going and I was looking at where the weight was mounted if we moved lead around and how much weight was on those rear tires from week to week. You know, the driver may lose some pounds and, you know, some lead may change. We knew, you know, the fuel is a little different, you know, as the weight spreads around and moves around, it will cause sometimes the same percentage, but the weight will fluctuate on those rear tires. If you're looking for traction, get in the habit of looking at rear tires as a weight and not as a percentage. Third thing I wanted to do is kind of give some ideas if a guy is a little bit lower budget or has a little bit different of a spring configuration or whatever on the modifieds you can do this. Figuring your dynamic ride height when you go out there. I'm going to do some diagrams over there that will show some stuff and how to make some different stuff for yourself if you want to make some ways of figuring out these dynamic ride heights. On a modified in the front, now it's real different because you don't run coil over stuff up there. What I've done and what I've seen done is if you drill a hole in your lower control arm and you go to your hardware store and you get like a piece of quarter inch rod and you can thread one end up, get a tap and a die set and thread one end up and then drill a hole parallel to your shock where you want to run the rod and drill a hole in your lower control arm. Thread that thing in there and then that'll be your guide rod from your lower control arm and then it'll run parallel to your shock and then on a shock just take a hose clamp and take an angled piece of aluminum or get some angled aluminum from a hardware store Bend a 90, drill a hole in it, and put a hose clamp on it. Run that rod up through there and put a couple of grommets or something on either side of that rod. When you go out and you're going to go test, you're going to go hot lap, you know, push those grommets up against a piece of aluminum. Go out, run very consistent laps. You know, if you know there's holes out there, don't hit them and just run uh, real smooth laps you kind of get an idea of exactly what kind of weight transfer you're seeing what kind of ride height change you're seeing there so that's what I would do on a mod on a late model of coilovers I'm gonna draw like I said some examples of that you can do it in your shop if you don't want to buy the all-star stuff for me it was way easier just buying the all-star stuff because you buy it once and you have it. The thing I have to caution you about with the all-star stuff is what the stuff on the bottom to figure your dynamic ride height is a plate that'll go underneath your between your spring and your coil cup. But now once you're done figuring that and you put that thing in a spring smasher you have to take you have to take up the difference or than that if you were to set your spring down unless you're going to run that all the time. What I used to do is just put them on and run them all the time. If you want to, you know, after you get done running, you take it and you unthread it from the bottom. You take the whole thing apart. But you always want to keep either keep that plate in there so your load and your height stay the same or you want to compensate for that plate when you put that thing in the smasher. For me, I always just kept it in there and it's unbolted or ran it all the time. It was not too big a deal. I'll draw some diagrams of exactly what stuff would look like and if anybody wants to make their own. So let's go over on the drawing board and let's draw some diagrams and look at some different things over there. I want to do a little bit of this graphical representation of what I call spring couple. I think that's the correct terminology for it, although I'm not positive. But it is like the total spring rate front to rear or side to side. I think if it's side to side, they call it roll couple. If it's front to rear, it's called, I guess, dive couple or something like that. 
But what you want is if your car is pretty balanced and all of a sudden it just, you get to a point where the track gets really heavy and you're really going in hard, it, to try to maintain a balance sometimes, it's better to increase both springs. Let's say you had a 550 on the left and a 500 on the right, and the car used to be balanced. You go to the track the next week, and all of a sudden the thing is just plowing on the right front real hard. I would suggest starting point is if you just want, instead of cranking turns in there to raise it up or just increasing one side, try increasing both sides the same. So then when the car dives on that front and de-wedges and moves around, you have a more consistent spring rate to control your diagonal um, weight transfers a little bit more. So try stiffening both up the same amount. Another thing you'll find with this is a lot of times your car will dive on the right front and you're thinking it's just a right front problem, but because of the roll center and how everything moves in the front, the left front is also carrying weight. You know, the left front may dive an extra, like, three quarters of an inch more, and the right front might dive an extra inch and a half. But stiffening them both equally, you take that little bit of dive out of that left front and it'll... The left front will actually help hold up that right front just a little as it also increasing the spring. So overall, increasing the spring in the front is where I would start. It's not always the best thing. You have to tune from there. Every situation is a little different. But keep that in mind next time you go to the track and the car used to be good and it's bottoming out now. Okay, this is where I kind of go over some of this weight stuff and now this is only this isn't always just comparing your car to somebody else a lot of times when you travel to different tracks different series you got to add weight you got to take weight out and this is just something to keep track of and something to put back in your mind if your car all of a sudden you got to run a different weight rule and you got a problem so what you actually got here, let's say you run your normal car and it's perfect and it weighs 2,350 pounds, you're running 55 tail. Your total weight on the rear tires is 1,265. But now you take your car and they go to, you go to a track and they say, oh, your car's got to weigh 2,350, so you throw an extra 50 pounds in there and you're still running 55 tail, but now the weight on the rear tires at 2350, if you're still running 55% tail, is 1292. That could cause your car to get too tight. Sometimes you got to really figure where your weight, if you got to go to a track and you got to add a little bit of lead, you got to kind of put that lead a little bit more central. So I guess it doesn't affect. I mean, you may end up taking a little bit of rear out of the car just to get this rear tire back to its perfect state at 1265. It's always a good idea to keep track of the weight on the rear tires as well as the percentage. A lot of people just say, I'm 55 rear, 54 rear, whatever. But now you go to a track and they run a weight rule and you fit into a class so you can run somehow 2250. Well, then you get and you go out and you run and your car is too loose. Well, your rear weight percentage here is down to 1237 at 55%. And it may cause your car to be a little too loose or the balance to go out of your car. So always keep track of the weight on the rear tires as well as the percentage. Percentage doesn't always tell you everything. Keep track of that weight. I did a video and it ended up pretty short and it is called a short. If you go on YouTube, it's what their YouTube is starting to promote is YouTube shorts. That'd be less than a minute, but I'd like to go through this a little bit more in a full length video in case guys wanted to hear it. They don't want to, they don't see the YouTube short. But anyways, the all-star part number for these ride indicators is a 695 
And I found the best place to get them if you're shopping online is at Pit Stop USA. They got them pulled right up on my Google search. But to find out your dynamic wheel load on a shock and spring to put in your spring smasher, the first thing you want to do is mount this thing on there and go out with your car and run some smooth laps. Then you take that thing off there and you put it in a spring smasher and you take it and take it to your ride height and you record the weight that is at ride height. Then you can smash your car down to the compression that the indicator showed here and you record that weight. That weight is your what I call your dynamic load. It's I was corrected in my previous video. It's not actually a wheel load, it's actually a spring load because when you figure a wheel load, you actually have to figure your motion ratio difference to the center of the tire. I've heard wheel load and spring load used interchangeably, so now I got in the habit of using them interchangeably, but it is actually a spring load, not a wheel load. When you smash that thing down to this height here in your spring smasher, you're gonna record the weight there and your that'll be your dynamic wheel load so any spring changes you make you put it back in the spring smasher put your different spring on there and you want to take it to that height then all you do is you just screw into that spring till that height equals the same amount of weight you saw so your load and your ride height on that corner of the car will always be the same even though you change spring. Okay, I had a viewer ask me exactly how to make one of these uh, dynamic ride height figuring deals if you didn't want to buy the All-Star one. I really like the All-Star one. It comes in a kit, they're not that expensive, and they last forever. But if you wanted to make your own, I kind of show you what you can do. This thing here, is just an L piece of aluminum. If you go buy some aluminum at a hardware store, you can put it in the vise, you can bend it at a 90, and then this is just a simple automotive hose clamp. Here you put it around and you secure it. This rod here is just a piece of like quarter inch rod from the hardware store, and then you would thread this end here and put like nut top and bottom on there so it wouldn't move around it'll run parallel to your shock what you want to do then is you want to make sure that the center line here in this hole is exactly in line with the center line here and this hole you got to get these to line up so these this rod will run through there. These here are just little hardware store grommets that fit snugly on the rod. You don't want something loose that's going to vibrate around. And that's all those are. So when the rod pushes in, you know, it can push up and down and give you kind of your travel indicator here. This plate down here is actually a plate that will fit in between your spring in the bottom cup of your shock and it'll have a hole here i got another diagram this is the plate that kind of here that they use this hole will fit your bottom spring cup and then they had two holes here one is for maybe if you run a barrel spring the other one is if you run a narrow spring and then the angle aluminum is from the top you would have two holes here that would line up with your two holes here. From the side view it would be like this and your holes would go here, your hose clamp would go here. It's a pretty basic thing, you can elaborate, you can make your own if you have a different spring set up and you'd like to try something different, but that's pretty easy and like I said, Yellow Star stuff is really good, never had a problem with it. If you like this video, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. Notifications aren't very scammy. We're not going to send you email or nothing. It's just when you log into YouTube, it's going to tell you that I got a new video up and you can go watch it if you want. 
But subscribing and ringing the bell for notifications, that helps me out a lot and it encourages me to keep doing these videos if you like them. So please subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.